She's an Australian film and television actress, breaking through on The Elephant Princess and Roadkill before moving to the States and guest starring in Fringe and portraying Elsa on Once Upon a Time and Amelia on Snowpiercer. Georgina Haig is at Supernova in Melbourne. She's giving us a little bit of her time. This is a Trek Zone Conversation. Well, it's a thrill to be back on the convention circuit after all that COVID stuff got in the way. Now, we've got a little bit of construction going around the Trek Zone studio at the moment, so you might hear some drills and stuff happening in the background. But Georgina, welcome to the show. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having a Trek Zone conversation. Which character have the fans mainly come to see? Um, well, a lot of people uh, come because they love Once Upon a Time, and I played Elsa from Frozen in Once Upon a Time. Uh, which is nice, but a lot of Fringe fans as well. And um, John Noble is also here, just down there. And so, um, yeah, it's lovely meeting Fringe fans. A lot of Snowpiercer fans, uh, which is really nice. Um, and a few people who like Archive 81, which is the new show that I'm in on uh, Netflix. Well, it's incredible to see the folks coming out to Supernova, a full house there in Melbourne. Did you expect to see this sort of reaction from, from, from fans uh, when you signed on to work on Fringe or even Once Upon a Time? No, I mean, I think when I started out, I didn't even know what a convention was. <laughs> um, or I just thought it was uh, for comic books and, you know, like that's how they started out. And slowly but gradually they've morphed into being uh, all about all different kinds of pop popular culture and encompassing... Uh, all sorts of things, film, TV, gaming, um, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, so it was a world that I wasn't really familiar with, but um, I think it was, yeah, on Once Upon a Time, the producers kind of said, look, you, need, you should be ready that like, there, there, there are conventions, you might get more following on Twitter and all that sort of thing because people love this show and yeah, so... It's just nice because when you do film and TV, often you never get to meet the people who watch the shows. And so it's nice to get to be face to face with people who like all these different shows. It's awesome. Well, specifically on Fringe, I have a feeling that the fan base there would have been more vocal and more pronounced as it were, if it aired closer to now time with social media and the like. Fringe has, um, yeah, like that show just had such a vocal and passionate fan base. Um, who just believed in the show so much and was so, uh, yeah, so into it. And so, um, yeah, it was kind of lovely to join that family and to uh, talk to people who um, loved the show so much and who it meant so much to them. Um, yeah, that was great. Well, let's dive into family. Your brother is sitting next to you at the signing tables. And while we don't have him on the show, is there any sibling rivalry when it comes to number of fans in the lineup and, and waiting to see you? Well, we did steal some lightsabers and have a lightsaber fight. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, which was great. Julian would probably beat me, though, to be fair, in one of those. Um, no, it's just lovely to be here with my brother. You know, we're really close and it's just more fun when you're around family. Yeah. Your dad wrote scripts for BMX Bandits and Blue Healers, the former of which launched Nicole Kidman. Your mum, a fine artist. You pursued ballet, though, all the way to the University of Melbourne, but deferred that to teach English in Vietnam for a year. What was the motiv motivating factor for you there? I grew up in a country town. I really, really wanted to see the world. And um, I thought living in another country would be a great way to do that and to kind of um, immerse myself in a different culture would, yeah, just be a really amazing experience. And um, I had no qualifications for teaching, uh, but, you know, I sort of figured it out on the go. And it really was one of the best things I've ever done. And, um, yeah, I'd highly recommend taking a gap year to, to anyone. But, yeah, I, I, after I did that, I travelled all around Southeast Asia. And, yeah, it was just awesome. Um, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Well, after that gap year, you returned home to Australia, moved to Perth and studied acting at WAPA, the West Australian Academy of Performing Arts. I'm sure learning alongside many colleagues and friends of mine uh, was all around that time that I was at uni as well. Yeah. Graduating in 2008 with credits on The Elephant Princess, Underbelly and Road Train. Guest appearances on Fringe from 2012 got you yeah. started in science fiction. Have you got a favourite project or credit, uh, either what I've mentioned or, or something else? Well, I, I don't know. I, I loved working in comedy. I um, 
worked on, I only had a small role in it, but I love doing a moody Christmas. I just did one episode. Uh, but then um, I went on to do a sketch comedy show with those guys. Uh, and yeah, that was really fun. And that's sort of something I'd love to get back into because yeah, I have done a lot of genre stuff, but it would be fun to do more comedy. Um, I did a film called The Mule that actually John Noble's in it as well and Hugo Weaving, Noni Hazelhurst. So it's got this amazing Australian cast. Um, but it, yeah, like a lot of people haven't seen it, but it's it's a great film and that was a really fun project. Um, and then, yeah, obviously playing Elsa was an incredible experience and the fact that you're getting paid to wear, you know, a queen dress covered in diamantes and swan about, it's uh, kind of awesome. Now, my research tells me that you were considered for Gwen in The Amazing Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield's second movie outing. Uh, you lost that out to Emma Stone. I know that's how the business works sometimes, but do you often wonder what might have been? That was all such a whirlwind. I, that was my first trip to LA, and um, I'd only been there a few weeks, and then all of a sudden I was testing for Spider-Man, which meant like I met Mark Webb and um, Andrew Garfield, and I had like, a full hair and makeup camera test, and... Yeah, it was just an incredible experience and I mean, <laughs> can't be bitter about it like Emma Stone is even then was like already a movie star and I was not. Um, but yeah, I was just really, I don't know, it was just an amazing experience to get that far um, and gave me some confidence in a way that I should keep pursuing stuff in LA, which yeah, I did. I ended up uh, moving to LA and that was fun. Yeah. Now, you've worked across the Aussie and US TV industries over the past decade. Uh, being an Aussie podcast, i got to ask, Georgina, which one's the better one? Well, <laughs> it's different because um, I'd say in the States and Canada, you know, the productions have a lot more money. They're a higher budget usually. Um, but that's not necessarily a good thing. Often it means longer hours. Um, there's more of a hierarchy Whereas I love the fact that when you work in Australia, um, it's more of a level playing field. And, and yeah, it's like way shorter days because there's no money to do overtime. I don't know. So it's just a bit more, you can have a kind of nice work-life balance working here. Um, but then it's also, you know, the opportunities in the States and in Canada are vast because they've got the budgets to do all these different genre things. So I don't know, there's pros and cons to both, I guess. Is there anything on the horizon for you? Uh, anything you can tease us with? Upcoming projects and, and, and the like? Uh, I am currently on a Netflix show called Archive 81, which um, it's really, yeah, it premiered in the middle of January and it was the number, uh, in the, it was the number one download for a couple of, uh, or number one streaming for a few weeks in the US and in the world, I think. So that was really exciting because we weren't expecting that at all. It was this random show that, yeah, it just, so great um yeah such wonderful people involved in that so yeah hopefully that goes for a second season but we're waiting to find out um and i just did an australian series called back to the rafters which was the sequel to pack to the rafters which was really fun um yeah and a few other projects on the go but yeah waiting to hear georgina thanks so much for taking the time to have a trek zone conversation oh thank you it's my pleasure thank you so much for chatting with me